Hello, I'm Mark Boyajan, and welcome to Episode 3 of Neutrik Tech Talk. The first 10 episodes of our series will feature the top 10 technical questions received by Neutrik. Today, we'll be discussing the Neutrik Combo Connector and answering the question, how can I wire a Neutrik Combo to accept either XLR or quarter-inch plugs using only one wire to feed the input of my mixer, console, or other device? And to answer that question, we'll look at one of the most frequent uses of the combo in the field today. Come join me. The Neutrik Combo Connector is a 3-pin female XLR and stereo quarter-inch jack in one connector body. Let's take a closer look. Here we have a female XLR on the left and a quarter-inch jack on the right. The XLR connector has three contacts, pins 1, 2, and 3. The stereo quarter-inch jack also has three contacts, tip, ring, and sleeve. The combo connector combines each set of contacts in a single connector body, offering the same total number of contacts. In this example, our combo, which is an NCJ6FI-S, has three XLR pins, one, two, and three, and three quarter-inch pins, tip, ring, and sleeve, which are independent of one another. With the contact arrangement of our combo defined, we need to join the XLR terminals to the quarter-inch terminals on the back of our combo, so we can use an XLR or quarter-inch plug on the front of our combo, using only one wire to connect the back of our combo to the input of our mixer. And to do that, we're going to use solder jumpers or lead wire. There are many wiring combinations possible with the combo connector. And before terminating your combo, consult the manufacturer of your equipment to make sure that you have the correct pinouts or wiring schematic. Additional considerations may be necessary when using phantom power. Again, always contact the manufacturer of your equipment to ensure that you have the correct settings or wiring for your gear. Now, on to the soldering bench. In order to make the combo accept either the quarter inch or the XLR connector on the front and have that route over one wire to our patch bay or to our console or mixer, what we're going to need to do is create those solder jumpers that we discussed earlier. Well, what I have here is some lead wire, some 22 gauge lead wire, and some solder. Of course, my soldering station and some uh, my combo connector, which in this case is an NCJ6FI-S. It's a solder type combo connector. It has contacts for tip, ring, and sleeve, or a stereo or balanced quarter-inch product. And it also has XLR pins 1, 2, and 3. It has one additional contact on it, making a total of seven contacts on this product, and that's for chassis ground. For this particular uh, tip, we're not going to be using the chassis ground, although your installation may require it for your local codes. So I want to be safe about this process. First thing I'm going to do is put on my safety glasses. And we're going to start up our soldering iron, let that get warmed up. And what I'll do is start by filling up my solder cups just with a small amount of solder on my combo connector. So it'll make it easier for me to assemble the lead wire to it in just a moment. Doesn't matter what order you really do this in, just as long as you're careful. You don't need to over solder. So I've filled in our solder cups on our combo connector. In this case, I've filled in the tip, the ring, and the sleeve contacts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lead wire, and I'm going to go ahead and start attaching that to one side of our connections. So in this case, we're going to start with our tip. We'll just heat up a little bit of the solder, stick our lead on there. And then we'll cut that off. Now I'm cutting these a little bit longer than you probably would in the field. It's kind of a waste, but I'm doing this for illustration purposes. And then we'll do the ring. And having that solder on there already just makes it a little bit faster to do the job. And then finally the sleeve contact. This end soldered up nicely. 
fairly straightforward. Again, it really does help to start it with some solder on there already. Uh, you can see that I can simply just uh, hit the solder with a little bit of the temperature from the iron and it wets rather quickly. Okay, so now I no longer need my lead wire, but what I have here is a combo connector with the three pieces of lead wire coming off of the tip, ring, and sleeve contacts on the back of the combo. Now what I need to do is define my pinouts for my XLR so that I can create jumpers using this lead wire over to those solder cups. For the equipment we are using today, here is the pinout or terminal jumper configuration we will employ. Remember that every installation is different and this illustration may not apply to your system. We are tying together pin 1 of our XLR with the sleeve contact, pin 2 with the tip contact, and pin 3 with the ring contact. The cable we are using has two jacketed conductors and a bare drain or stranded shield. We can terminate these wires along with the other end of our jumper leads to the XLR terminals of our combo. One wire will go to pin 2, another wire will go to pin 3, and the bare stranded wire will go to pin 1. Now that we've soldered our combo connector and I've attached it to this wall plate, I'm going to go ahead and take the other end of my cable and plug it into one of the inputs of my mixer. I have two patch cables here, one XLR to XLR and the other one quarter inch balanced to XLR. I'm going to take my microphone. Using my first patch cable, the XLR to XLR, I'll plug one end into my microphone. The other end I'm going to plug into the front of my combo. And we'll go ahead and perform a mic check. And mic check indicates that the microphone is working properly. Now we'll go ahead and try the other patch cable. I'll disconnect my microphone and the XLR from the front of my combo connector. Now we'll take the XLR to quarter inch patch cable, one end into the microphone. The other end, the TRS or balanced quarter inch plug, will go into the front of my combo. And we'll go ahead and turn up the levels to see how our microphone's doing here. And mic check indicates proper operation. And I can now use either one of these cables, quarter inch or XLR terminated, with my microphone, instrument, or other source to one input on my mixer, all using the combo. The Neutra Combo is a unique product and can offer the integrator multiple options in a single connector that can serve hotels, educational facilities, houses of worship, permanent system installs, and more. On a future episode of Neutra Tech Talk, we'll cover another feature of the combo, switching contacts. We hope this video helps you use Neutra connectors. Until we connect again, I'm Mark Boyajan of Neutrik Tech Talk. Thanks for joining us. To view or listen to other episodes of Neutrik Tech Talk or get additional information on Neutrik products, please visit any of these media outlets. And as always, we welcome your feedback, comments, and suggestions for future episodes.